We continue with our leading story as family, friends, comrades and associates of George Bezos continue to pay homage to him. The veteran human rights lawyer died yesterday at the age of 92. Advocate Jeff Butlender worked with uh, Bezos at the Marikana Commission. Butlender was an evidence leader while Bezos represented the Liningwana family at the commission, one of the minors who was killed on the 16th of August. Butlender joins me on the line now to broaden this discussion. Advocate Butlender, thank you so much for your time. As we reflect on a man who stood for truth, a man who's been described as one with great humility, as we want to assess the scope of his involvement in human rights matters, his contribution to the legal fraternity, uh, what exactly are, are we looking at here and is it even possible to um, try and understand the scope and significance of his contribution? Yes, well I, I should clarify by saying I first worked with George in 1976 when I was a young article clerk. He was one of the advocates representing people prosecuted in the USAS trial, student, trial of student leaders. And I worked with him in a number of ways over the 40 years which, which followed. He, he, was a, he was an extraordinary man because he had a, a deep passion for justice and human rights, which wasn't theoretical, it wasn't philosophical. He identified with people who were oppressed or discriminated against. He hated injustice. And he's in the, the bulk of his legal career, he was at the bar for, I don't know, 50 odd years, was about that. It, he started representing people in the 1950s who were uh, resisting apartheid, and that was the theme of his life right till the end. Uh, he ended up, of course, representing the famous and the mighty, but he never forgot ordinary people, because what he, what drove him was a, uh, a passion for justice and, a, and a, a hatred of injustice and oppression and discrimination. Uh, he became an icon in the legal profession. Uh, he was famous for the work he did, and he was an icon in the country. I, when we worked together at the Legal Resources Center in the early 2000s, sometimes we would walk down the street together to go for lunch, and we'd be stopped by one person after the, after the other, black and white, saying, Mr. Bezos, Mr. Bezos, I want to shake your hand. He became a, a, a legend in his own lifetime. Let's talk a little bit about um, the work he did at the Marigana Commission. Of course, you, you speak about uh, how he wanted to see justice for, for many. The justice for the miners and their families was also a very important matter to him. Oh, yes, very much so. He, you know, by then he was still already pretty elderly, but he came to court each day, came to the hearing each day, cross-examined witnesses, uh, engaged with the issues, engaged with the evidence, and uh, his passion was undimmed. What are some of your fondest uh, memories of, of uh, Advocate Bezos as, as a human being, as, as a man, uh, not just in his professional scope, but uh, as someone that you, you related with? Well, he was, he was very human. Uh, he, he, he had a great warmth, a great generosity, uh, one of the highlights of the year, each year, was that George would have a big party at which he, inv to which he invited his friends. Uh, they'd fry a lamb on the spit. Uh, he would produce uh, wonderful salads from his garden. He was a fanatical vegetable garden. He got up very early morning, every morning. First thing he did in the morning was go to work in his vegetable garden before he went to work uh, as, a, as an advocate. And he then shared the produce of his garden with his friends and his colleagues. If you had a party and you invited George, you could be sure he'd arrive with a magnificent bowl of salad. Oh, wow. he, he, had, he had a humanity about him which was uh, remarkable. I remember 1976, that, that year when I first worked with him, having a consultation with him and with Charles Newpin, who was one of the accused. And uh, we sat in his chambers that evening, and the first thing he did was he read us some Greek poetry pulled down off his shelves the poetry of C.P. Kavathi, wonderful poet, read us some poetry, told us some stories about past political trials he'd been involved in, put us at our ease, made us feel more comfortable about the, the difficult case that was to come, because he understood that we were, we were both anxious. I was anxious. I was a young lawyer, my first case, actually. And uh, 
Charles was anxious. He was facing jail for his political activities. Mm. He, he cared about the people he, he worked with and the people he represented. You speak about uh, being a young lawyer, yet we also know that uh, um, he's been spoken of as a man who had the ability to teach young lawyers about uh, social injustice and, and how to uh, assess and carry themselves in such cases. What do you think that are some of the powerful lessons that uh, young lawyers can learn from uh, a stalwart, a giant of his kind? He loved working with young people and young people loved working with him partly because of his extraordinary, legendary reputation, partly because he was a very fine teacher. He used, you could watch what he was doing, you could see it and you could learn from it. And he loved telling the stories of the past cases that had taken place, all of which were to illuminate what was taking place at present. So uh, it was uh, working with him was a, was a revelation because you learned about the case, you learned how to conduct yourself as a lawyer, and you learned about the history of South Africa at the same time. And what are some of the most uh, significant lessons that you will continue to be inspired by as you reflect on him, uh, his work and his contribution to the country? Well, I think the most important thing was a, a continued passion for justice, which he didn't allow to be diverted in any way. When the apartheid was finally defeated, the ANC came to power, his passion for justice and for human rights remained undimmed. Uh, it was his friends who were now in government, but his attitude was if they breached human rights, he was going to take them to task. And so his commitment to human rights was a, was a broad one for all people. And the other thing he taught us, I think, was that he had extraordinary stamina and courage. When other people would fail and give up, George would keep going. And that ability to keep going under adverse circumstances, I think he learnt in the 50s. Mm. And he, he used one sort over and over again right through his life. Thank you so much uh, for your time. What uh, incredible uh, reflections as we reflect on the life of advocate uh, George Bezos, a human rights lawyer, a man described here by advocate Jeff Butlender as one with a deep passion for justice, human rights, and one who hated injustice. Of course, we'll continue to bring you more reaction as we uh, mourn and reflect on the life of Advocate Bezos as we try and uh, speak to other people who can share their stories about the kind of man uh, George Bezos was and the contribution he made and had and the impact that he had on those around him.